Hello everyone, Ken here. Please ignore any uh, dog related noises in the background of this video. As you know, uh, if you've watched my previous videos, I recommend that you experiment with collecting and analyzing data from unique data sources, especially if they're interesting to you. Today, I'll be analyzing and applying a couple different data science techniques to my YouTube data. YouTube does a great job of giving you a dashboard with some descriptive statistics, but I wanted to go into a bit more depth today um, analyzing that. I've also appended some information that I've collected about my social media posts related to my channel, so hopefully we can see how much of an impact that actually has on uh, my channel growth and viewership. As usual, you can see my code linked in the description below. I also have included the data in that uh, GitHub repo. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see content similar to this, please subscribe to my channel. So the data that I'm using for this analysis is the past year of my YouTube data. That's generally when I started posting regularly. Now, you can go in the YouTube Studio tab if you're a creator, and you can download information over time, so a time series of a lot of the different statistics that are relevant. So you can look at watch time, you can look at views, subscribers, likes, click-through rates, um, unique viewers, etc. So for me, um, I'm trying to push towards that monetization threshold, uh, which is 4,000 hours of watch time. And that's one thing that I'm going to look to see how my different activity, uh, how it influences that. I will be making a couple different graphs using matplotlib, and then I will do a simple multiple linear regression to evaluate a couple factors on my watch time and the, the growth of my subscribers. Again, none of this growth would be possible with, without you, the viewers, uh, so I really appreciate your in engagement with my videos and, and your, you know, just watching them in general. It really means a lot to me that hopefully I can make a positive impact on your data science journey. Uh, with that being said, let's kind of dive into some of the numbers here. So in this first chart, you can see that I use matplotlib to actually chart my views, my watch time, my percent view to the video, my impressions, click-through rate, subscribers, as well as likes um, over this past year time period. Now it is a little bit fuzzy, it's a little bit messy, because this spikes a lot by day. I then, in this new uh, data you know visualization have normalized those values over with with a seven day rolling average i did a seven day rolling average because i generally produce content weekly so that should give you a a, a clear view of what we're looking at here so as you can see across most of the categories there's a general upward trend to the data the vertical red dotted lines are every time that i've posted a video and right now it's not really clear if, if that has an impact on uh, the views, likes, or subscri subscribers, any of these things. There are some pretty aggressive spikes, uh, which I will hopefully explain in a little bit here. One thing that is interesting to me is my uh, thumbnail impressions, as well as the percent of uh, the video viewed over time. So it looks like some of my early videos uh, had a lot of traction, people were watching all the way through. I kind of hit a trough in the middle, and then now I'm starting uh, to, to improve upon that. As I, I think uh, I've started to find an identity for my channel and things like that. So any, any recommendations on actually um, improving either of those metrics are always welcome in the comment section below. It is interesting to see that right around May, um, I did really start focusing more on my thumbnails for the videos, and it appears that they're starting to get more clicks related to that. So that is a, a pretty exciting um, insight that I get from the data, that that is, that is actually working to a certain extent. One thing I wanted to understand was the subscriber chart. So let's explain that a little bit. There are a couple days where there are huge spikes in subscribers, uh, and then the rest is a pretty uh, gradual incline. So those are days uh, when I actually posted on social media, either in Facebook groups or on Reddit, uh, introducing myself, my channel, and, and the, the mission of, uh, of my YouTube content creation. So as you can see, there is some pretty aggressive growth during those time periods. Uh, but I also, a little bit later in the video, want to understand um, how much growth I can expect from an individual post. There are a couple different types of posts that I've done. 
So I've done those introductory posts. I've also posted videos as well. So I want to tease out the differences across the metrics of um, you know, the impacts from those two different types of, of content posts. One thing that was interesting to me that I didn't really see in the, analyt the YouTube analytics platform is my performance by day. So I would imagine that there are certain days of the week where, where you guys are more interested in watching my videos. So I really wanted to tease that out to try and understand um, you know, if there was a better or best day to actually post my videos. So if you, as you can see in, the, in these charts, I look at all of my metrics across each day of the week. And I've separated out the days where I've posted on social media or posted a new video in order to try and normalize for um, just like the, the average day of viewership rather than uh, a time where I've somewhat artificially inflated it. So as you can see, days where I post and the, the day immediately after one of those posts, uh, there, there is a significant jump uh, in all of the metrics. Um, I, I looked at two, three, four, five days after and there wasn't a, a significant difference from the average day there. So to me this is interesting, it looks like Monday has a slight jump compared to the rest of the days. Um, and you know that isn't uh, much more than a signal, but I'm gonna experiment with posting my videos on those days or in the morning, uh, Monday mornings, because I think that that might be when I really get a lot more eyeballs on my, uh, on my, uh, on my views, uh, I mean, on my videos. It might be that you know people, they're getting that Monday feeling around two o'clock and they start you know looking for jobs or they start researching this type of content. So I'm gonna fool around with trying to publish videos on Mondays from now on uh, because of this. So we've established that these uh, social posts and days that I actually post videos uh, do have an impact on my viewership, on subscribers, on likes, um, and, and all, of these, all of these things. Now, I want to understand exactly how much uh, these factor in. So I wanted to build a regression, uh, but first it makes sense to do a correlation plot to see which of these features are related. Okay, so this visual gives us an understanding of which features are related. I want to evaluate, uh, I wanted to build a regression for both my subscribers and my watch time. So I put in variables that I thought, well, that I have access to that I believe might be relevant to those things. So first of all, I wanted to look at what watch time is highly correlated with. Um, I thought that the previous day's watch time would very likely be relevant. So I made a feature for that. I also thought that if I published a video, I uh, made a Facebook post, uh, did one of these Facebook video posts, um, or any of these after, you know, next day effects of these posts would also be relevant. Um, it, not in this matrix is also day of the week. So I built that uh, into my regression model um, to see if any specific day was a determining factor. As you can see, the you know Facebook posts as well as the previous watch time are fairly highly correlated um, with the actual watch time of that day. We also see that the Facebook intro posts are highly correlated with the subscriber count. So those are things that I'm gonna to wanna to pay particular attention to in the model. When I'm building this model, I'm using it to understand rather than to truly predict, because I, I, what's most useful to me is the coefficients that I get. So I'm not gonna be doing too much cross-validation. I'm just gonna be using this for feature understanding. So that is what is actually most actionable for me here. If I was truly gonna run a more robust analysis, I would absolutely cross-validate. I would um, remove a lot of the semi, you know, more highly correlated features. Uh, but for this use case, I think that this analysis is sufficient. Okay, so for these two models, again, the one where the dependent variable is watch time and the one where the dependent variable is subscribers, I used the uh, sklearn module, uh, the simple linear regression, as well as the stats models module. I like the stats models module, the OLS, because the descriptive statistics and the summary statistics are a lot more comprehensive. So I was able, you're able to very easily see all the, the coefficients, all of the tests, um, and this is what it looks like here. So for watch time, what I found wasn't overwhelmingly surprising here. The R squared 
was right around 80.85, which means that around 85% of the variance was explained by these features alone. Uh, the, you know, the ones that were significant were uh, watch time of the previous day, as well as a, a new video post, a, um, a Facebook introduction post, as well as a uh, Facebook video post. So based on the correlation coefficient, if I post a new video that day, I can expect roughly 50 minutes of increased watch time. If I make a Facebook introduction post where I introduce my channel, I can expect almost twice that at 110 minutes uh, of increased view time that day. And if I make a Facebook video post, which is not surprising, my view time is expected to go up by around 185 minutes for that day. So, you know, those are the most relevant to this analysis. I also found that one of the days, uh, Thursday, had a significant p-value. And for some reason, on Thursdays, I just get less viewership. If it's a Thursday, it looks like I'm expected to get 22 minutes uh, less of view time. So that's also an interesting, um, interesting finding there. Maybe I should either pad that by posting on social media on Thursday, or just you know avoid posting on that day in general because that's a low viewership day. So for subscribers, these factors explained a lot less of the variance. We're looking at around an, an R square of around 35.35. Uh, so interestingly enough, there are only two significant factors uh, across all of the ones tested. That was the Facebook introduction post and also the uh, watch time of the previous day. The watch time of the previous day, the coefficient is really small, super negligible, but for the uh, Facebook introduction post, that was very interesting. If I do a Facebook introduction post, it appears that, um, you know, the, the, the correlation, co the, I'm sorry, the coefficient suggests that I would increase the number of subscribers I get that day by around 17. So, you know, if I post a video that day, I can also um, expect, no, I'm sorry, if I post a video the next day, I can also expect an additional three subscribers. So that is a, a fairly interesting characteristic. You know, maybe it's that I post videos a little bit later at night, and that's why we're not seeing the significance of the first day post there. If I were to redo or expand on this analysis, I would absolutely uh, normalize the uh, the values uh, for the time series. So my channel has experienced growth. If I was looking at percent change by day, that might give me uh, more useful results. I would also consider using uh, different regression techniques that had a bit more sparsity, uh, well, that were used for a bit more sparsity, like a lasso regression. Um, there, I, I didn't do too many Facebook posts. You know, we're talking less than 20 across that year. So uh, that might be something that would give me more accurate results. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, this was a real practical and actionable solution uh, for me. Uh, hopefully as my channel continues to grow, I can do an another analysis, uh, another analysis like this um, with hopefully more data. So that would be really great. Um, you know, and I have experienced again, really awesome channel growth. Uh, all thanks to you guys. I do really appreciate your, uh, your viewership, and I hope that I'm creating uh, really good value for you as well. Again, thank you so much for watching, and good luck on your data science journey.